Go ahead. So good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Saili. I'm the junior consultant and fertility specialist at OSS Fertility Pune at the Karadi Center. So I welcome you all for today's Facebook Live session. And our topic for today is ovulation and the fertile period. So today in the session, we'll be dealing with what is ovulation? What are the different methods to estimate the approximate period of ovulation and to increase the chances of conception in a couple? And what is the fertile period? Uh, you know, so if you consider a normal menstruating woman, a woman who has her menstrual cycles coming every 21 to 35 days, uh, there are these small follicles, uh, which are around the size of 2 to 9 mm, which starts, you know, growing from the second or third day of her uh, periods, that is the second or third day of her menstrual cycle. And this, uh, they increase in size and uh, by approximately the 13th or the 14th day, the follicles are going to increase in the size to a size of around 2 cm. And these follicles are going to rupture and they are going to release an egg from there. Now the egg that is released from these follicles, now this egg is, you know, picked up by the fallopian tubes. And it is during this time that if the couple has contact, will the sperm that is deposited reach, uh, you know, the egg in the fallopian tube and the uh, process of fertilization will take place. And uh, there is increased chances of pregnancy uh, during this period. Uh, so coming to ovulation and your menstrual cycle. Uh, so the process of ovulation begins uh, ideally from the second or the third day of the menstrual cycle. We have this hormone which is released from the brain that is the hypothalamus that is the gonadotropin releasing hormone. Now this hormone will cause the release of the hormones FSH and LH from the pituitary gland. Now the FSH causes the growth of the follicles ideally from the 6th to the 14th day of the cycle. And the LH will act at the final stage after the growth of the follicle. The LH is going to result in releasing the egg from the follicle as well as increasing the maturity of the egg that is released from the follicle. Uh, so after ovulation, uh, you know, following the, uh, you know, uh, the action of the uh, LH hormone, the egg that is released. Now this released egg, as we have discussed, gets picked up by the fallopian tube. And it is during this period that if the couple has contact with the process of fertilization take place and the pregnancy will result. Uh, now, if the pregnancy results, the remnant of the follicle that is known as the corpus luteum, this is going to secrete the hormone which is known as progesterone. And this hormone is then going to prepare the uterus for the pregnancy. We have the hormones that is known as estrogen and progesterone during the luteal phase of the cycle that supports the pregnancy. Now, these hormones are going to like, you know, kind of, uh, they're going to signal the uterus that there is a pregnancy and the uterus doesn't have to shed its lining. And therefore, there will be no, no periods which ideally are supposed to come 14 days after the period of ovulation. And therefore, missed periods is like, you know, one of the prior indication of the resultant pregnancy. Uh, now, when does this ovulation occur? Now, as we know, ovulation occurs 14 days prior to the expected uh, menses. So not all menstrual cycles are like of a 28 day uh, length. Uh, the cycles can vary. Even in regular menstruating women, the cycles can be of 21 to 45, uh, sorry, 21 to 35 days. So irrespective of the length of these menstrual cycles, ovulation usually takes place 14 days prior to the expected menses. So uh, 40, the first day of the menstrual cycle is considered to be the first day of the periods and not the first day uh, of the uh, stoppage of bleeding. Uh, now coming to the fertile window. Now as we know that ovulation takes place 14 days prior to the uh, start of the next menstrual cycle. Um, uh, you know and the ovulation uh, can be uh, tracked accordingly. Now the fertile period usually uh, is 2 to 3 days prior to ovulation. Uh, now pregnancy occurs if intercourse takes place 5 days prior to ovulation on the day of ovulation or 1 day after ovulation. That is because the lifespan of the egg that is released is around 12 to 24 hours. Uh, so the egg is going to be viable for this period and, you know, it is going to be available for fertilization after ovulation for a period of only 12 to 24 hours. 
but the sperm that is deposited in the female genital tract it remains viable for a period of 3 to 5 days so even if the couple has had contact 5 days prior to the period of ovulation uh, the pregnancy can result uh, if the process of fertilization and the formation of embryo takes place during this period but the highest probability of attaining pregnancy ideally will be 1 to 2 uh, days prior to ovulation on the day of ovulation or uh, a day after the ovulation now what are the indicators of ovulation so there are several methods by which you know you can track the menstrual cycle and you can estimate the period of ovulation and each of these methods that we are going to discuss forward uh, has its own drawbacks and therefore there is you know no single accurate method and we may need to use a combination of these methods you know uh, to get a better result so first is as we have discussed the menstrual cycle so if you are a regular menstruating woman who knows the exact length of her menstrual cycle then as we have discussed in a 28 day cycle uh, the woman usually ovulates in the mid cycle that is on the 14th day of the cycle ovulation usually happens 14 days prior to the next menses so depending on the length of the cycle you have to subtract 14 days from that and whatever number you get is the approximate ovulation period so as we have seen that the chances of conception are 5 days prior to ovulation and a day after ovulation. So you should keep natural intercourse at least on an alternate day basis during this period uh, to increase the chances of conception. Next coming is the calendar method. Now coming to the calendar method in individuals who do not have very regular menstrual cycles. What we can do is you can monitor your cycles for a period of six months. In these six months, you note the cycle which is of the longest length. And you know the cycle which is of the shortest length. Now suppose your longest cycle, uh, uh, you know, it uh, came after 35 days. And your shortest cycle came after uh, a period of uh, say 28 days. So you have to subtract from your 35 days, that is from the longest cycle, you have to subtract 11 days. And from the shortest cycle, you have to subtract 18 days. So if 35 was your longest cycle, then you have to subtract 11 days from it, that equals to 24. And if uh, 28 was your shortest cycle, you have to subtract 18 from it, that is going to be 10. So this period of 10 to 24 is going to be the most fertile period. And if you have intercourse, at least on alternate day in this period, will the, there'll be increased chances of conception. Uh, next uh, method of detecting ovulation, which is like a crude method, is the ovulation pain. Now, this ovulation pain that usually occurs as a result of rupture of this follicle and the release of egg from the follicle, this is usually seen in only 20% of the individuals. So only 20% of the women can experience this ovulation pain. And therefore, this is not a very reliable method. But if the woman is experiencing that, she can use it in combination with some other method uh, to estimate the period of ovulation. Now, this ovulation pain is in the form of cramping or, you know, uh, dull pain in the pelvic or the lower abdomen region that can happen in the middle or uh, on either side. Next method is the cervical mucus method. Now, the cervical mucus, our body is getting prepared so to, you know, to increase the chances of conception. Uh, so initially, the cervical mucus prior to ovulation, which is like a thick, white and dry secretion. Now, these secretions become transparent, they become slippery, they become, uh, you know, clear at the time of ovulation. Now, changes in the consistency of the cervical mucus can give us a rough about period of uh, estimate of the period of ovulation. Now, this change in consistency helps in the process of conception by, you know, by making the, the, the cervical mucus less viscous, more transparent. It becomes, you know, more easily accessible to the sperm. So the sperms can travel uh, through the cervical mucus and, uh, you know, it can reach up to the uterine cavity and then the fallopian. Thank you. Okay, then your next method will be the basal body temperature. Now, uh, 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 approximately around the time of ovulation, there is an increase in body temperature by 0 0.5 to 1 degree centigrade. Now, this method comes with its own drawbacks. It's like a crude method and it cannot be very much relied on. 
This method requires a woman to have a thermometer by her bedside and to record the temperature, you know, immediately after getting up in the morning, uh, before, you know, using the toilet, before having anything to eat or drink, before doing anything, she has to measure the temperature. The results of, you know, the uh, change in the temperature and the period uh, in her cycle when this temperature is elevated needs to be recorded for several months. Then only she can get an estimated, uh, you know, duration in in which her ovulation is occurring means her body temperature is increasing and that can be like an indication of ovulation so this temper uh, this basal body temperature method cannot be much reliably uh, used next comes our ovulation kit or what we all know them as the lh kits now these measure the lh surge now as we have seen that the fsh hormone increases i mean causes the growth of the follicles and the lh hormone 36 hours prior to ovulation, there is a rise in this LH hormone level, that is the LH surge. This causes the final maturity of the egg, the release of the egg from the follicle. And this rise in the LH hormone level is measured by these LH uh, kits or the ovulation kits. Now, uh, the kit is like, now this is similar to a urine pregnancy test. Now, it has two lines, the control and the test line. And if both of them, you know, they are, uh, I mean, if both the lines are present, this indicates that the LH surge has occurred and as we know that the LH surge takes place around 36 hours prior to ovulation so this indicates that the woman is likely to ovulate in this period prior to 36 hours and therefore they can have intercourse during this period and you know it can increase the chances of their conception now there are various modifications also available of these kits uh, we have these kits that can be connected to the cell phone and you know by using the buccal mucosa secretions or the vaginal secretions they can give us a rough about estimate of the uh, ovulation period uh, and the most diagnostic method which will you know visually show us that the follicle is rupturing and releasing the egg and the ovulation process is taking place is the, the USG, the uh, follicular monitoring by a transvaginal sonography. Now, in individuals who have regular menstrual cycles, um, you know, uh, you can just monitor the cycle from the eighth or ninth day of the menstrual cycle till the period of ovulation. In individuals who have irregular menstrual cycles or anovulation, we can use ovulation induction agents like, you know, to cause the growth of these follicles from the second or third day. And then you can monitor the growth of the follicles. Um, then when the follicle reaches an adequate size with a good blood flow, then we can give a final injection uh, in the form of a trigger that is HCG. Now, this HCG can be like a surrogate of LH, which will cause the final maturity and the rupture of the follicle. So post giving this HCG or trigger injection, the follicle is likely to rupture in a period of 36 hours. So we can monitor by uh, ultrasonography during that period and when the ovulation has occurred, which indicates that the follicle has collapsed uh, in size and there is free fluid in the uh, pouch of Douglas, can you ask the patient to have contact during this period? And this is kind of going to increase their chances of conception. Now, these are the methods that, you know, uh, which can track the ovulation and it will help us to know the exact period during which we are supposed to uh, have intercourse to increase the chances of conception. Now, there are a few symptoms also related to ovulation. Not every individual will show these symptoms, but in individuals in whom they are present, uh, they can be uh, in the form of tenderness of the breast, they can be excess bloating sensation, they can have uh, mild pelvic or lower abdominal pain, there can be a little bit of bleeding or spotting, there is increase in the sexual desire during this period, there are mood and appetite changes that can occur. So if the individual is routinely having these symptoms during the ovulation period, then they can better correlate uh, with these uh, symptoms. And during this period, they can have intercourse to increase their chances of conception. Uh, so till now we have seen the various methods of you know tracking your ovulation getting to know what your ovulation period is. So when you have contact during this period, can you increase the chances of conception? But as I said, these methods can only be used in individuals who have regular menstruating cycles, in individuals who know that, you know, they are ovulating. 
um and uh, you know uh, by knowing this you know rough about estimate period of ovulation can you increase their chances of conception so individuals with regular cycles who have rough about the same length of the cycle every month and for those whose menstrual cycles are between 21 to 35 uh, days then these methods can be uh, used to uh, you know know the period of ovulation and amongst these methods the most agnostic method is the follicular monitoring by the ultrasonography and uh, next we can also use the cervical mucus method uh, or we can use the ovulation kit now in individuals who have irregular menstrual cycles uh, now these individuals whose periods are coming you know in a very haphazard way who are menstruating in a very irregular fashion you cannot use these methods and these individuals the basic problem is you know ovulation therefore you might need to use ovulation induction agents to cause the growth of the follicles in these individuals and uh, you know you have to track the growth and finally when the follicle ruptures to release the egg can these individuals have contact Or use other forms of fertility treatment. So, what are the common causes of non-ovulation? So, they can be in individuals who are pregnant, individuals who are breastfeeding, older individuals with menopause or premature ovarian insufficiency, uh, in individuals with hyperprolactinemia, or the most uh, you know common causes of delayed menses, or uh, you know amenorrhea can be PCOS or premature ovarian insufficiency. amenorrhea can also result as a result of obesity that is excess body fat or when your you know fat content is too low the uh, as a result of stress as a result of fatigue as a result of increase in exercise uh, so uh, excessive exercise stress and all can cause irregularities in the menstrual cycle so in these individuals prior to going for the ovulation induction or other form of treatment we definitely need to you know treat these underlying causes and then only uh, can we move ahead with the treatment uh, Uh, so as we have seen the methods of detecting ovulation increases the chances of uh, conception and following the fertile window period these methods can be you know routinely used by the couples but however if a couple with regular menstrual cycle if they are using these methods of ovulation detection and if they are uh, and are not able to conceive in a period or you know span of one year or if they are having any abnormalities in their investigations like if they are having abnormal semen parameters or if they are having a low ovarian reserve or they are having other uh, problems that can interfere with the fertility or individuals with irregular menstrual cycles uh, especially individuals with pcos who need you know ovulation induction for the growth of the follicles um, then uh, these individuals definitely need to visit a fertility specialist so they can guide you and after proper investigation and proper evaluation uh, you know likewise treatment can be given to these individuals uh, so individuals who have like irregular menstrual cycles and who have all other lab investigations or evaluation or uh, within the normal limits then these individuals like you know in uh, like uh, patients who are having pcos what they really require is ovulation induction so we can use ovulation induction agents in the form of oral agents like letrozole uh, or we can use uh, the uh, hormonal uh, gonadotropin injections uh, if there is no response to the oral agents we can do follicular monitoring track the ovulation in these individuals and ask them for a natural intercourse during this uh, period uh so this is all that i have from my side uh as of now i hope this session has helped you know you to improve your knowledge of ovulation better and uh, you know uh, so that you can use these methods you know to track your ovulation have intercourse during this period and increase the chances of conception and definitely i hope this session has even helped you to understand that there is a time limit till which you know we should try naturally without any fear but after that if you are not able to conceive or if there are other problems you should definitely uh, visit the fertility specialist and take the likely treatment uh so thank you this is all that i have from my side let us see if you have some questions coming over from our viewers okay so the first question that is up is how do i know when i am fertile and ovulation uh so uh, we have already discussed in this session that how do you know that you are fertile and ovulating uh 
so there are various methods of detecting the ovulation that you know we have dealt in the session uh, in this you can either use the ultrasonographic follicular monitoring to check whether your follicles are actually developing uh, you know you can use the LH detection kits or you can use the cervical mucus method and to know whether you're fertile or not you know you can get certain uh, hormonal assessment uh, lab investigations done uh, to you know to know your AMH levels or to you know your antral follicle count individuals who have have regular menstruating uh, cycles and who are showing signs of ovulation uh, definitely indicate that they are fertile. What is the fertile uh, period or the ovulation period? Uh, so the ovulation period uh, kind of varies for every individual depending upon the length of the uh, menstrual cycle. So ideally 14 days prior to the next menstrual, uh, I mean expected menses is going to be your ovulation period. And the fertile period that as we have seen is the sperm is viable for a period of three to five days and the egg that is released is viable for a period of 12 to 24 days. So the fertile period is ideally five days prior to ovulation and one day after ovulation. Okay, so the next question is how many hours does ovulation last? Uh, so the ovulation, uh, it involves the rupture of the follicle and the release of the egg uh, in this process. So the ovulation uh, period is of a shorter duration, but the uh, egg that is released, it is viable for a period of 12 to 24 hours. So the next question is, what are the signs of ovulation? So as we have seen that some individuals, uh, you know, they experience ovulation or the mid-cycle pain. So in individuals who experience this pain, uh, this can be one of the signs of ovulation. Uh, the other signs of ovulation is, uh, you know, you can uh, get these, uh, uh, the kits, the test LH surge detected on the kit. And if there is a rise in LH uh, hormone level, this indicates that the ovulation has occurred. Uh, there can be a little bit of bleeding also during the ovulation period or when we are doing the ultrasonographic monitoring ovulation indicates that the follicle has collapsed in size and it has released the fluid outside so there's collection of the fluid in the pouch of the ovulus during this period Okay, so the next question is what happens to the body immediately after ovulation? Uh, so, uh, you know, following the process of ovulation, when the egg is released, uh, the remnant uh, follicle that is there that gets converted into a corpus luteum and it releases the hormone progesterone that is going to, you know, uh, support your pregnancy. The estrogen and the progesterone hormones are, that are there that supports the endometrium. Simultaneously in this process, there's a rise in the body temperature. The egg that is released, it gets picked up by the fallopian tube and the resultant sperm can result in the process of fertilization. Um, and the body goes into the phases where your, you know, your uterus is ready for the process of, you know, pregnancy, for the process of, you know, uh, like the in the tubes, the fertilization process, the formation of embryo, and then subsequently, uh, you know, uh, preparing the uterus for the process of implantation. All these uh, features are going ahead. Okay, so I think that's uh, those are all the questions that we have. So thank you, everyone. Uh, so if you have any queries uh, relating to the session today, uh, if you have any doubts or if you need any help, you can dial the helpline number that is given below or you can reach uh, physically at any of our two centers that is OSS Fertility, uh, Kaspate Vasti at Vakar or Arisa Avenue at Karadi. Thank you.